Welcome to Inside the Huddle. I'm Mike Joseph for the Lafayette Sports Network. Today, we're going to talk about Lafayette versus Mammoth, a team they played last year. Close game in the first half, kind of got out of hand a little bit in the second half. But I think one way we can talk about Lafayette moving the ball offensively and staying on the field is what we call run-pass options. This is the big keyword. Uh, nowadays, everybody talks about run-pass options. Well, what are they, and how can that increase your completion percentage? Early in the year, we talked about Sean O'Malley and Cole Northrop having to complete a high percentage and stay on the field on third down. Well, run-pass options are one way to do that. Well, let's take a look right now of what a run-pass option is. And right now, what we're trying to do is basically maybe create and uh, put one of their players in what we call conflict. And right here, if we set the formation to trip, so we have one, two, three receivers to the front side, but we also have the run option to the back side. So if we want to do the run option here, we want to reach everybody and basically run block. So we're going to give the defense a look of a running play, okay? We're going to count the guys in the box. We have four, five, six, seven. So seven in the box versus six guys up front. We put a guy in conflict. If he adds to the box, it's an easy bubble screen or throw to the front side. So when you place a player in conflict, whether he's going to be in the box or outside the box, that is the conflict player. That is the run pass option. So as Sean or Cole come to the line of scrimmage, they want to take a look. Well, how many guys do we have in the box? If the number outweighs the number of blockers, in other words, six blockers, seven defenders, basically you were going to throw the football. So we're kind of calling two plays in the huddle or we're putting two combination plays together. So in this situation, if this corner was off and they rolled the coverage to the front side and he was definitely out a little further, now the conflict is six on six, so we have the ability maybe to run the football back in this direction. So anytime the running back set to this side, the running play is probably going to go in that direction. There's really no downhill run look. So now as we count the players in the box, we get a run pass option. Now what do we do? How do we put that player here in conflict. Well, immediately we can run the bubble screen to the outside, or if he's going to widen, we can run the seam route. So as the quarterback takes the snap and rides the running back in, his eyes are not on the running back, his eyes are out here to the field looking at the player in conflict, whether it's the uh, outside linebacker, the safety, the far safety, or the backside safety. If it was on this side, his eyes would be back here. So different ways, kind of off of the read option, to put a player in conflict so we can run the seam route. You saw that last night in the Jet game, Quincy Anunua, right up the seam, right off the fake, boom, hits him down the seam. Or if he's going to play a little bit tighter, we could actually run the seam route here, the quick stop and slant and curl. So quicker reads for the quarterback, like Sean O'Malley, when he has a high completion percentage, it's when he knows where the ball is going immediately, different than, say, drop back pass. Now, these are the situations on second and 10, third and 10 where it may call for more drop back but on a down like first and 10 or when you're on schedule second and two to four to six or three to one to four somewhere in there on schedule puts a lot less pressure on your quarterback it what it causes is more first down staying on the field so Lafayette this week run pass options versus Mammoth.